Hey metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions, meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email agelessarttattooandpiercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, it's Jeff McNichol down here at Mom's Music, 1900 Melwood Avenue. I was just thinking, when I was a kid, the magic was at Frankfurt Avenue, the Mom's Music at Frankfurt Avenue, and I used to beg people to get a ride down there just to hang out with the guys and see all the cool gear. Now that I'm the owner of this store, it's like a dream come true. We're recreating the magic with the vibe that we used to have at the old store. We're carrying all the gear that you're going to possibly want. We're giving you the outstanding service and personal attention that you deserve. Yeah, so we've got the great guitar shop here. We're carrying USA Fender, USA Gibson, Paul Reed Smith, Gretsch, Jackson, Charvel, anything you could possibly want. We're going to have it for you. Mom's is and always will be Louisville's music store. Thank you for tuning in to The Metal Forge. I am Mark Jackson, and I am your host. The premise of the show is pretty simple. Awesome interviews and awesome music. If you want to contact me, hit me up at MetalForgeRadio at gmail.com or visit the website, MetalForgeRadio.com. And now, let's get this show on the road. All right, Metalheads, thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of The Metal Forge. How the hell is everybody? Yeah. I'm doing fairly well. It You know, a little bit rainy this week, a little bit hot. But hey, that's what it's all about. It's all about pounding out the best fucking metal out there. And today we have a little bit of a different deal. My friend, uh, the one-man show Fingernails is here in the Metal Forge studio. He's doing some EDM type stuff, but he's also mixing in some awesome fucking like death metal elements and shit like that with it as well totally makes all his own sounds super fucking rad shit we're gonna check in with him here in just a minute because also in another minute we're gonna do a metal mischief athena is back and this one's a little bit special because she's sitting here and we're gonna talk about some cool fucking shit hell yeah dig that so I'm going to keep this super short and super sweet because I don't know how long Athena and I are going to talk. Hell yeah. This is so fucking cool. I'm glad to have, you know, Metal Mischief here in the Metal Forge this week. It's so fucking awesome. Misfits and miscreants, bangers and mashers, deviants and the deviated, the tormented and the fermented, ghouls and goblins, creatures of the night, jack those headphones, crack the volume to max, spark it up and just relax. It's time for your deadly dose. Welcome to the next installment of Metal Mischief. On today's lineup, Corpsessed succumb to rot. So, preemptively, I've got to say this is a very special Metal Mischief. I am actually in the studio with Mark at the Metal Forge Studio instead of the Heavy Metal Bunker. 
So, you know the shenanigans are going to be even more amplified. You didn't see that, but I'm doing like the air quote thing again. <laughs> so, Mark, turn up that fucking metal, make with the bourbon, and help me find my fucking lighter because it's time to gush about some death metal from Finland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome. Mark, say some shit. Dude, you're here, like, in person. It's so fucking cool. Like, <laughs> holy shit. I cannot believe it. It's been, like, a long time coming, you know, like, to actually, like, hey, how can we do this and, do, and actually do it? <laughs> and actually do it. <laughs> right. Because it's, it's totally fucking rad, you know. And, you know, you did sit there and say, so here's the bourbon. I <laughs> tried to make a noise for it. <laughs> Actually, like, yeah, we're oh. a little too far away, but I'm yeah. gonna, I'm cheersing Mark right yes. now. Yes, like, yeah, it's kind of like the air quote thing. You gotta just like imagine, yeah, imagine it because yeah. this is not <laughs> television. No, it's not even YouTube. No, and I'm glad because <laughs> I didn't put on any makeup this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I just look like me. So, <laughs> hey, I gotta say. It's special for me to be here, man. Thank you for having me, for sure. And uh, it's an honor to be in the Metal Forge studio. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you're here doing this. Because I get to see the, you know, like how the sausage is made at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's for me, it's awesome. Oh shit, I gotta put my pants back on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> sausage isn't shit. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, I'm very honored to be here. So I'm going to go on my whole spiel now. Yeah, tell okay? us about Corpses. Corpses. That's right. So I have a good buddy of mine who lives down in Texas, and he likes to periodically. So, hold on one second. I have to preemptive this. We've known each other for over 20 fucking years. We've been to over 100 plus metal shows together. Me and this guy, Tim. He's fucking awesome. He's from Texas. And he loves to send me shit every week that he finds that's random and whatever, you know. So this is actually a drop from my buddy Tim in Texas for Corpsest. Now, of course, I heard of them before and I listened to some of their stuff previously. They've been around for a while, almost 15 years or so now. So, you know, I've heard some of the other stuff, but I hadn't really followed up with them. So when he dropped this in my bucket, I was like, all right, man. And as soon as I put it on, I was like, this is an album I have to review. It's so fun. It's energetic. It's old school. So that's my preemptive here. I'm going to go into my little spiel now. Small droplets of spit dance. Well, in this case, we will call it track number seven, Profane Phlegm. <laughs> In the pulsing red lights, as bodies start to convulse and fists start to fly, this is some old school death riffs vibrating down your spinal cord. That's right. Corpses began in 2013 with the dagger and the chalice and continued to consume the rotting flesh with their newest album, Succumb to Rot. The recording and the mastering of this album is gritty. You know, the way death metal is supposed to sound, in my opinion. This overproduced stuff, you know, it's... You know, I'm just not a fan of the overproduced sound that I find permeating the metal scene nowadays. It's too clean. We want the pops, the cracks, the, the fucking wrong notes. That's what makes it so unique. And so fun, you know. Um, just stop overproducing shit, man. And that's what I, one thing I really liked about this album is that it was raw and it was real and it wasn't overproduced. Those little pops and cracks and like things like that are in there. And I really fucking appreciate that, you know. It's dirty and gritty and it sounds like they have their face buried in a fucking muff. That's right. That's fucking fun, death metal. A fucking muff. <laughs> Mark's face right now is pretty priceless. It's great. 
the vocals are not garbled, you know, in the way that you cannot understand them. Uh, trust me, I am a huge fan of piggy vocals, but for the sound that they have, his vocal style is perfect. Also, it does not dominate over the music. The production is clean, but not overproduced. A little echo here and there, but then some crushing guitars and heart palpitating drums lead you down this dark, beautiful rabbit hole. I did not skip one song. And Mark, I believe earlier when we were talking over a glass of bourbon, that you also did not skip any of the songs on the album. Not at all. And it was just like I put it on, and from the intro track, you know, I just, from that whole thing, was was hooked. And just had to listen to the next song and and all of that. Just, be, just because it was just so fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, nowadays, it's, it's easy to put out an album where you got four or five songs that are really fucking good. But to put out solid albums where you don't want to skip a song here and there and you're like, eh, not this one, eh, not that one. This this album literally was like straight through, solid, didn't have to skip anything. All the songs were conducive to one another. It wasn't like, it was all over the place. You know how some albums, when they're trying to kind of like reinvent their sound after they've been around for so long and... And, like, half the album sounds like one band, and the other half of the album sounds like a whole completely fucking different band. Corpse Us, like, stuck with their roots, which I really appreciated with this. You know, there was no, uh, like, trying to change it up. They were like, nope, this is who we are. This is what we do. Here's our fucking new album. I appreciate that. A lot, actually. I really do. You don't have to change shit up. You really don't. Like, it's nice to, like kind of like reinvent yourself a little bit when it comes to like new albums but to completely change your sound which I have found a lot of metal bands have done over the years is kind of disheartening in some ways yeah I I can get behind that because it's you know what works works stick to what works right You, you know you don't have to you know I understand growing as an artist but fuck you know come on Right, but, like, your fans fall in love with you for, like, what you are putting out there. If you change that up too much, then, you know, you're going to lose some of your fan base because it's not what they're looking... I don't even want to say accepting or expecting. I mean, it's what they're looking forward to. Right. You know, so I can honestly say in this fact, Corpsessed... They haven't missed a fucking beat. Like, it is... They have been solid every album. After I went back and listened to this one, I went back and listened to all their albums. Just so I could, like, compare between, like, their, you know, their changes over the years. And I have to say, they haven't really changed that much. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think they're holding on to their roots. And, you know, they have had the same band members... For, I think, like, ten fucking years, they haven't changed their band members? Which, nowadays, everybody is like, it's like a dirty horse swap. You know, it's like, let's just, like, oh, you want my drummer? I'll take your guitarist. Oh, you want my bassist? I'll have your vocalist or whatever. <laughs> you know? But, you know, I'm just giving props to Corpse S for being, like, solid in that way. That it's the same members all these years making these albums. And, you know, that, like... That's a steadfast thing for me as a metalhead, you know. And I can like look at the lineup, and I was like, "Oh man, I, I know these fucking motherfuckers." And Hell yeah, that's something that's like totally rad to me too. Is the whole keeping the same members? Mm-hmm. That's you know, that's all. Like you said, it's unheard of today. I mean, mm-hmm. I know of one professional band that I think has all its original members still. And I say professional, meaning like major artist band, uh, Rammstein. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or is one of the only bands that I think I can pick that has, like, all its original members. And they have, like, 20,000 members. (laughs) So. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But you're absolutely right, man. It's, that's, you got me. That's exactly what I was saying. Like, yeah. Totally cool. I mean, I I appreciate the fact that we have so many talented musicians that we can, like, kind of wife swap, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, it's... I think some of them I know have wife swapped. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think that's like a reality show waiting to happen. <laughs> Metalhead wife swap. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Don't be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so getting, yes, thank you for your input, Mark. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll shut up now. Um, no, no, I, I don't want you to shut up. It's all right. But I have to say, I really did enjoy the fact that the drums, um, I'm big on percussion, like vocals and percussion. I know like guitar, that's an easy like, oh, guitarists, oh, they're heroes and all this shit, right? I get that. Absolutely. I fucking admire so many guitars. But badass fucking drummers, man, percussion, that leads everything. Your percussion leads the whole band. If you're not a badass, then the rest of your band has to pick up <laughs> where you aren't a badass. But I have to say, honestly, um, the drums are absolutely amazing on this album. They're technical, but not overwashed. They're not tinny. Um, they sound very earthy and I like that the drums are a little bit muted. Like that's one of the things I noticed that I really liked for a five piece band. No one musician actually stands out over another. The talent and the music is very balanced on this album. You know, sometimes you can hear like more of the guitars, more of the vocals, whatever. Like this one, I feel like it's very even keeled between the entire band and I really appreciate that about the album um, and then I you know I just want to go back for a second I know Mark's already talked a little bit but I just want to say Mark Mr. Mark Jackson Athena let Mark talk yeah yeah these are my notes I'm just like literally reading going my notes off the notes <laughs> Athena let Mark talk <laughs> it is extremely I, well mixed <laughs> Mixed, yeah. Well mixed and mastered, I will say that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I think so too, man. Um, okay, so now that we have put our noses all up in the business, it is time to introduce the stars of the show. And I don't mean Mr. Mark Jackson over here. No, you're the star of this. This is Metal Mischief. No, it's... No, it's, it's, oh, we're not even going to get into this right now. <laughs> <laughs> And please, as always, excuse the lack of talent that I have for people's names. Like, I try. I really, really do. <laughs> Here's our lineup. Jesse Dakamana on the drums. And that's literally how I think he says it to people. Like, I'm probably way off, but Jesse Dakamana. That's how I would say it if I had that name. <laughs> Yuri Lustig. On the guitars, Matty Michaela, Mc Michaela, Michaela, backing vocals and guitars. Another name I really like, Nico Matelea, lead vocals, and Tumas Kalumala. I almost feel like I'm like bringing something up from the dead when I say Talas Kulamala. He is on the bass. And probably raising the dead as we speak. Yeah, it is like the three words. Klatu. Yeah. Varata. Nickel. <laughs> Nickel. <laughs> I was also thinking of the movie House. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yes. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So now that we have met the members, it is time to talk shop. Or, <clears throat> I guess, morgue. In this case, I may have already mentioned that this deadly, fabulous five piece resides from Finland, but I have not mentioned that it was recorded, produced and mixed at Furnace 5034 starting in October 2020 and wrapped up somewhere in January 2021. It was mastered at Resonance Sound Studio and distributed by Dark Descent Records starting on April 22nd, 2022. Seems like a very lucky number to have your album released on. I'm just saying. All right. Oh, in my notes, it says, take a shot and banter with Mark. 
<laughs> <laughs> Take a shot. I didn't bring mine in here. No, oh shit! I will drink twice for us. Then. Yes, here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it works. Oh. Thank you to Blackened Bourbon for sending me some. And yeah. This was batch 107, I believe. Yes, and, batch 107. Um, quite tasty. I've, I've, thankfully, because of Mark, tasted batch 127. Ah, yes. As well. And their rye today. Yeah. And but- um, they're all actually fantastic. If you don't know about the Black and Bourbons, they actually. When they put the bourbon in the barrels and they're getting ready for that shit to fucking sit and ferment for a while, they play Metallica songs yeah. that vibrates the barrels, which in turn enhances the bourbon in really metal fucking ways. Right. Right? Yeah, ultra low frequency rumbles of of Metallica playlist songs, which is pretty fucking cool. It is actually really fucking cool. And you know, I can just imagine it's Metallica and the Black and if we had like Cannibal Corpse or like uh, oh, Decapitated wow. or something like that or Cattle Decapitation or something and they were like, you know, uh, fermenting bourbon with Cattle Decapitation just like, that would I, be, I don't know, I just feel like that would be in a really aggressive bourbon. It really would be, I think. <laughs> it would probably burn like a son of a bitch. Right, but it feels so good oh, going yeah. all the way down. <laughs> Almost like, you know, that bang over in the morning when your neck hurts and shit. Oh, yeah. And you probably drank too many PBRs and, oh. and like, well shots the night yeah. before. <laughs> and I'm not even just talking bourbon. I'm talking, like, whatever the fuck your friends are feeding you. <laughs> anyway. I'm, I'm such a bottom shelf person <laughs> at the bar. Oh my god, me too. I'm so poor. <laughs> it's okay though. It's still metal as fuck, man. Fucking right. You know what you do? You drink, you watch metal, you hang out with your friends. That's what you do. Hell yeah. So, here's to you, here's to me. Add one more, and that would make three. That's a scarecrow original, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so. I always like to mention that you should stalk everybody on Bandcamp. Go! Support the metal community. Buy music. Buy merch. The scene would not thrive without us. Mark knows his band needs love, too. And I don't mean find an old sock, a 15-year-old Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition, or your mom's vapor rub. That's hardcore. (laughs) <laughs> but realistically <laughs> I don't know about you masturbation or sex to metal is a fucking volcano organism orgasm <laughs> organism <laughs> I, I organism totally just read my own thing wrong <laughs> that's all good though <laughs> orgasm <laughs> <laughs> Do I have your full attention? (laughs) Good. Because it is time for Athena's five shot review. Here are the rules. If you have been sleeping through class. Five shots. I needed five shots to get through this motherfucker. Four shots. Meh. Could have used some oomph. Three shots. Good. Made me air drum. Bang my head. Two shots. Really good. Put that shit in the glove box for traveling. And one shot. Excellent. I'll probably have a bang over in the morning. So, shitty drum roll. I am going to give Corpse Succumb to rot. Two shots! Really good, man. Put that shit in the glove box for traveling. All right. And since this is a special edition, Mark. Yeah. Uh Oh. Ah. What is your shot review? It's definitely going to be... 
how many. <laughs> Definitely two shots as well. Put it in the glove box. It's coming with me. And, and you know, put it on the iPhone. Listen to it regularly. You know, that's the cool thing is it, it doesn't take... It's, it's like 35 minutes. So we've listened to most of it already. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so fucking rad. Like I said, there's not a skip on it. Yep, not a skip. I love it. Two shots Don't all around. That's all right. You heard it here on the Metal Forge and the Metal Mischief. So, until we meet again, have a most excellent time. And remember, keep it heavy. heavy. <laughs> I had to cough for like five minutes. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into this with fingernails. This is Guiding Light.
You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop, the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, metalheads, today is a little bit of a different episode because I have, I don't know, do you, do you go by another name on stage? Uh, I know you know, about, I know it's fingernails. Fingernails. But is it still the world of ZS? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'd say so. <laughs> right. It's still just the, the crazy nonsense that I hear in my head. Definitely. Yeah. So, as I said, I have fingernails here in the Metal Forge studio. These are awesome when I can actually have somebody come into the into the little the little uh, uh, cracker box here <laughs> and, and talk. So, dude, what's going on? Oh, nothing much. I've been um, trying to uh, finish up an album, finish up a couple of collaborations that I'm working on. Um, Currently don't have any shows booked, so I'm just making as much stuff in the studio as I possibly can. Definitely. So before we get into all of that, let's let's give a little bit of a preface here because you are electronic music. Yeah. But you also have elements with guitar and stuff like that too. Yeah. Um Yeah, so I I think um the goal of the Fingernails Project from the beginning was always to make really heavy music that do- doesn't necessarily rely on guitars and blast beats and gutturals and all that shit. Because uh, I think heaviness is more of a an attitude. It's not. It it's not doesn't have anything necessarily to do with what is actually creating the sound. Um, but lately, I've been trying to incorporate more metal guitars and stuff, and kind of blend my two loves of metal and electronic music together, and to kind of this. What, what, whatever I, this, you would call it. This amalgamation of <laughs> yeah. conglomeration of music. Yeah. Which is always interesting to me because, you know, you said something that I immediately agree with, and that's heavy as an attitude. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be because of distorted guitars. Yeah. It can be a lyrical content. It could be like, you know, out in your fucking face, just like ridiculous. Yeah. So, yes, for sure. Now, you and I have known each other for a while, and you you moved to California and went to went to school and went to work in a studio and stuff out there mm. before moving back to the Louisville area. Yep. So, how did that f- shift your your music from being in like a, a band to doing it all by yourself? Um, well, I started doing making electronic music kind of actually by accident i was writing a bunch of metal riffs and i just wanted something where i could just program some drums um so i just it's not just guitar you're hearing all the time um but so i downloaded this software and pirated it obviously because that's how you do it right (laughs) that's how you get started with anything um i'm telling lars (laughs) um so and then i realized i can make all these great it had all these synth plugins i was like oh i can make techno music and it was really shitty but so that's how i started doing that and then it didn't i just started doing it kind of for fun and i didn't really have a direction or anything um and then i went out to california and i met up with a group of people that do monthly meetups and they do they did kind of like um <clears throat> like a writer's round type of thing like like you play something that you're working on and then they give you some feedback and tips and stuff and then that's when i realized oh okay people are kind of actually interested in what I'm doing. I should probably start trying to take this a little more seriously and actually actively try to get better. So that's when I, I started, started the fingernails project and, uh, yeah, it's just kind of grown since then. Absolutely. So 
with all of that, you said you, you know, like the think tank, like the writer's round type deal mm-hmm. and, you know, getting the feedback. I think in this day and age, people really discredit electronic music. Like people are like, oh, well, they could just do it over a weekend type shit. But yeah. when it really yeah. doesn't really, it doesn't do that. It's just like anybody else who writes a song, mm-hmm. especially if you put theory behind things. Yeah. It it just I mean it is there are a lot of people out there that will just download like loops and sample packs and just all the little elements of a song that someone else made and they assemble it to something and and yeah I I, I can agree that it doesn't really take a whole lot of energy or quote unquote talent or whatever to to do that but um, there's if if you're really trying to make your own your own sound there's a lot of time and work that goes into actually making your own sounds because not all so you got to make all these crazy sounds right here like they don't just exist right like beat makers in rap and hip-hop yeah you know they they do the core writing process of it and then you know sell those to whoever Mm -hmm. or collaborate with somebody else to sit there and say hey put something over this yeah and that's the other thing that you know, I've played you on the radio side of this show before. Mm-hmm. There's no vocals on anything. Yeah, I I don't have any metal vocals on anything yet. That's uh, interesting. Um, I've had, I've worked with singers, but it's all like you know, we're pretty like singing. operatic. Yeah, not not operatic. That'd be cool though. <laughs> that would be. I'd be down for something like that <laughs> for um, sure. <laughs> but no, no, there's no like screaming or anything on any of it yet. Yet, maybe. I mean, it might be a facet you're going to go down in the future. Yeah, I think it'd be something that'd be fun to explore. See, that's the other thing, you know, not answering to an actual band yeah. has to be awesome too. There is definitely that. That is was really appealing to me also because all throughout like high school and like early through um, like college, I was trying to start bands and stuff, and it's just it's just real hard to find people who are reliable and you know. Are That's on the same thing. page, um, so yeah, it's really nice just to only have to answer myself for sure. It, well, again, reliability, accountability—you know, making sure everybody's on the same page and nobody's out getting trashed before yeah. a show, before yeah. practice. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, which for the longest time you didn't actually perform live but that's something that's changed here recently correct yeah yeah i played when i was out in la starting in like 2016 i played a few shows out there um then i then i stopped for a while when i moved back here and um kind of restarted my life again but i've started playing shows again um the past few months so it's not it was never it it started just as me like in my bedroom making Really crappy music, uh, without the intention of playing it anywhere. I think that's most bands, probably. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'd never had the intention of playing it until I meet, met those people out in LA, and they were like, "You should really start playing some of this shit out." Okay, if you, if you say so, put me on a show, and we'll see what, ha- what happens. Well, I yeah, I agree with that because anybody, it seems like any five dudes that could get together and be a recording deal. You know, mm-hmm. you can have have them do whatever, but going out and making it, you know, playing in a band, playing on stage, that's the realness aspect of it and being seen. Yeah, and it's it, it's really hard to get five people who can go on tour at the same time, too. Right, absolutely. You know, for you, this that would be a dream, I would think. You could sit there and pack up your, your car with whatever you have, your, your guitar and your laptop or whatever, yeah. or mix station, and just, you know hit places at random if you want if you yeah. wanted to yeah you know and that's the other thing is there's so many different places that you could perform not necessarily being quote in the metal scene mm-hmm. you know well you might brush up against metal but you brush up against like edm mm-hmm. which we're gonna rechristen that title for electronic death metal sweet i like it <laughs> hell yeah yeah so <laughs> it's gonna be fingernails Electronic death metal. Electronic death metal. Which is, <laughs> that's, I like that a lot. I like that. Right. Because a lot of times I, I will approach something that's like, all right, I want to make a death metal song without guitars. How do I do that? <laughs> How would death write a death song without guitars? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, that's that's amazing. I, I would pay to see that. Like, t- get me the time machine. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we're going to go back. We're going we're gonna to get Chuck, and we're going to be like, all right, no, don't play guitar on it. 
Oh, how, yeah. How do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. But that's what it's all about, yeah. is being ridiculous. So, <laughs> jumping into the shows again, with this being a, like a kind of a new thing, how does this work? Because I've seen people play to like tracks on stage and stuff like that, but that that are not primarily metal musicians. Mm -hmm. They're experimental stuff like that. that They play to tracks on stage. Do you, how do you do it though? Uh, Well, late now that I've started doing shows again, I'm just doing regular DJ sets with all pre-recorded songs. But um, back when I was playing out in LA, I would have a big APC uh, media controller hooked up to my laptop, which would give me, I was able to separate out my, some of my my songs and like into the stems and kind of mix and match the different elements a little bit okay. more so than you can with just two decks on a DJ right mixer. Um, but yeah, I'm just doing basic DJ sets now. Okay. Um, if if the, if it becomes more of a thing where I start playing guitar more, I could probably try to incorporate that some live guitar over. Over, I'll just just I'll just mute them, you know, just bounce out like an, a version of the song without the guitars in it, and just and, play with that. Yeah, or you know, doing like the uh, like the loop station type stuff. Where, mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. See, that would be totally fucking rad. That would be cool. I've seen quite a few people do that. There, uh, Dustin Swaggart, who was on the show a while back, he that loop station pedal is like his whole band. That's cool. And, and in, is it just him on stage? Yeah, absolutely. And, nice. he's, and, it, and it's acoustic, but it's like a heavier deal with it. So, yeah, I, I would totally be interested in seeing something like that. Because I legit went to a show one time, and it was just like a dude brought a folding table and a computer chair and was just like clicking his mouse and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, wow, this is kind of uh, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would, I would hope that anything I do would be a little bit more interesting than that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, everybody. Let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com. Hey, it's Mark Maxwell at Maxwell's House of Music. Listen, all this stuff is now available to purchase on our website. Check it out at maxwellshouseofmusic.com. We carry all the top brands, like Fender. We got Gibson. We also have basses. We've got ukuleles. We've got drums. We've got sound gear. We've got keyboards. It's going to get weird is the name of the podcast. We're on season two. So you have a whole season to get weird with Frank Green and Scott Clark. The best part is there's always laughter. We have national touring comedians, NFL stars, rock stars, your local friends. It always gets weird. Weird answers. Have y'all ever snorted coke off of a 78 Pinto? No? You ain't no Man. Weird questions. Who had a bigger cocaine habit, Jock Sutherland or Kaywood Ledford? <laughs> Neither one, because they stopped beating their wives. <laughs> and weird, we never even thought of. Well, no, my friend is on acid, and I sent my friend to go find a payphone so that I can call and turn myself in for murdering this guy and ruin my life. We love all types of people, but we don't love all people. <laughs> <laughs> weird. It's gonna get weird. Is the name of the podcast available everywhere? And thank you to Big X Sports Radio for being a proud sponsor of It's Gonna Get Weird. Frank Green, Scott Clark. Yeah. So, another thing is that with albums, Hmm. you do have quite a few things out. And obviously, you know, stuff on Bandcamp, Spotify, all those places, you know, links will be listed below for stuff like that. But you don't have anything out on physical media yet either, do you? No, I honestly never never even thought about it. Um, That would be really cool. Right. Yeah. I mean, so like, is that a goal to to do something on on a physical medium at some point? Uh, it is now. 
would, <laughs> I, would like, love wow. to have, I would love to have some of my stuff on vinyl. I think that'd be really cool. Well, yeah. And I think that's the ultimate goal for most musicians in today, you know, is to have something out on, on vinyl mm-hmm. because yeah. it's, Hey, I mean, that's like the, the essential quote making it. I yeah. think with a lot of people is that it, it's like, Back in when I was a teenager and shit, it's like having something out on a CD with a barcode on the top, like yep. the top spine That's label. That's when it was legit. Yeah. It was like, oh, it's got that, it's got that label on top. It's got even got a little hype sticker on there. <laughs> yep. That That's fucking making it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then now, you know, it's like vinyl is such in the in right now. Right. And it's just like, how awesome is it to have something on vinyl so much in fact that it is, um, you know, the market is like skyrocketed expensive again. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think physical physical media. I'm I'm a, I'm that guy that always buys a CD. Yeah, I, I miss the availability of CDs. I still I still love CDs. They're still out there. I still release on CD. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's it's hard to find unless you go to a show. You know. Yeah, that's true too. Or yeah. just order on Alpha like Bandcamp or something. Right. Oh, and then you have the the aspect too of uh, your your in town record stores and stuff like that, your independent, you know, brick and mortar stores like and you know, that's always a, a pain in the ass too sometimes. Yeah. Because, you know, you you as an independent artist, you can sign your stuff there unless the the record shop owner is cool enough to buy it outright mm-hmm. and then he just sells it. Yeah. But yeah, totally finding it finding CDs at shows and stuff for yeah. sure. And even I mean, even though I do buy I'll buy a CD if I can, if I, if I'm at a show and the bands are selling CDs, but I still don't have any way to listen to them. I still have to rip them on my computer. <laughs> right. And, and, and to listen, listen to, to them digitally. Yeah. That's funny. But I just like having something you can hold. You could put it in the, uh, put it in the, the PS5 or whatever. Do they play CDs? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the, I, I don't know even know if they have disc drives anymore. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, you know, that, when I was setting up to do this show, I wanted to go with a, a nice laptop setup and think what you will with laptops and shit like that. But like I went there and it's like, I've got to be able to have a way to rip CDs and shit mm-hmm. and almost no laptops come with CD drives anymore. Yeah. And it's like, what the hell? It's like dead medium, you know, yeah. like nothing comes with an A drive. You know, yeah. <laughs> I've got a keyboard that has, that still has a little 3.5 floppy disk drive on it and it still works wow so awesome but (laughs) it's a relic it is it really is and that's the whole thing is like i really would like to have a way to do stuff like that because i still burn cds and listen to them in my car you know i still burn mixes of things i mean is that even a thing for you does your you you have a newer car does it even have a cd player it doesn't even have an aux cable it's bluetooth or or what? It's Bluetooth or bust on my car. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, I really wanted an aux cable, but no luck. That's that's hardcore. Um, but yeah, when I bought the, my last computer, the one I'm currently using now, it was really hard to find. It's just a CD burner. That right. Would, that, like a USB one that could connect and wasn't a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> I actually had to do a lot of shopping online just to find a burner. Right. Oh, I'm sure. Because that's the way the technology has worked. And I'm sure with like your programming that you use, you probably, when you first started this, it was probably like the most bare bones, like fruity loops or whatever. Yep, that's what it was. I mean, of course, because <laughs> it was the easiest pirated software yep. <laughs> because everybody and their brother downloaded it off of LimeWire. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what it was. I was there too, <laughs> but I didn't stick with it, of course. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was fun. But yeah, so like the, the easiest of software and now, you know, 20 years later or whatever, it's, the way technology has advanced since, you know, just even since like burning CDs at home Mm -hmm. and now look at the, the affordability behind it, I guess. Yeah. And say, and that's, that's one of the things I like about the, having the physical media too, that you don't get on, um, digital downloads is you can, you can unfold the artwork and and sometimes it's like a cool poster or something, you know, Mm -hmm. for sure. Which you, I mean, sometimes you'll download something, off Bandcamp, it'll come with like the PDF booklet, but that's not as cool. And it's not the same, no. Yeah. And you know, I I know a lot of people that 
that do that, that have a, an actual PDF booklet, not just the cover art. Mm-hmm. And you're right. It's not the same, that poster aspect, if that's the case, or actually seeing the lyric yep. print out is yep. another thing. And, you know, I think that's like the big fascination that I had with vinyl is the artwork was just so big yeah. on there. You notice a lot of details. That oh, for sure. For sure. Artwork. Like, you get a copy of, like, Sad Wings of Destiny by Judas Priest, mm. and you just see the all of the color in there. Or take, for example, the album Sacrifice by Motorhead. The artwork in there, there is so much going on mm. that you can just dissect that album cover and go completely wild and see something different almost every time. Yeah, you know, like Nazis marching into hell type shit are on that cover, and mm. it's so cool because I, because of that. Have you seen the? Uh, the I think they're up to like two or three different volumes at this point. But Injustice for Art, the art book of it's all metal art. Work. No, I haven't seen. And it, they talk to the artists and like, what was your inspiration or nice. process for like designing this album cover? It's pretty cool. I'm gonna have I mean, to look you into would like that. It. You, I would you'd definitely really like it. that. And, and and you know what I really like too is when. Independent artists will, so for example, you have like the Injustice for All cover. Mm -hmm. What you said made me think of this. And then you have like a recoloration of it Mm -hmm. where like Lady Justice is in like a burgundy dress or something and she has blonde hair where it's not just the the marble and statue on the cover type thing. Mm -hmm. I I really enjoy stuff like that where little variants. Yeah, like little Mm -hmm. variants out there, which is so cool. Speaking of which, on on do you do any anything like that with your digital art for your for your albums? Do you even do that? No, I mean I get art, I, I like commission, okay, or or I'll just purchase one that someone else has made already. But uh, it's just the cover. I don't I don't have like you don't any, give a specific direction to somebody and say this is what I want. Sometimes I do. Um, it depends on if there's a theme behind the EP or the album that I'm working on. Then I'll tell them, you know, this is what this is what I kind of want to convey. Um, it just really depends on whether or not it's got a concept behind it. Okay. Now, are which is interesting to me because being in a in a band that actually, you know, has. Uh, a vocalist, albeit shitty. Uh, no, 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 don't say that. <laughs> uh, but but you know, quote popular music, mm-hmm. and this is like the argument I always had with Megadeth. It's like Megadeth would not have any vocals if it wasn't required of them to be quote popular music. Yeah, because watch Dave live. <laughs> he he mumbles through everything. Yeah. So how does an artist like yourself? work into a concept album type thing with just music because obviously with vocals involved there's a lot there can be a lot of vocal tag back Mm -hmm. segments where you know take for example uh the song aqualung and the song cross-eyed mary where aqualung the the hobo the bum is watching cross-eyed mary play in the playground Mm -hmm. through the fence you know so it's like and it's direct referenced how do you do that um, I generally, when I do have a unifying concept throughout an EP or an album, I, um, each song, I go into it with kind of a scene playing out in my head, like out of a movie. And I don't, and, and I try to kind of create what I think that would sound like. Okay. Um, so that's my way of trying to convey an idea without relying on lyrics um, which it, obviously it's more hit and miss whether or not the listener gets that. Um, but that's how I try to convey any type of concept or unifying theme. That's really, really interesting. And it's like, super deep. Actually, I spend, I spend a lot of time looking for t- trying to find textures and creating sounds that have like the right type that fits the scene that I have in my head. Okay. And whatever the scene is, I mean, yeah, you are the one who obviously knows what it is. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it it might not be that same scene for the listener, but the beauty, uh, the beauty part of that is is that's how all music is. I think Mm -hmm. it it is even, even in my stuff, what I do is very much like, this is what I want to convey, but 
it's open for interpretation. Yeah. You know, like I'm looking at a backside of my album cover, like right now, Mm -hmm. and, you know, having a song called Evil Bitch, (laughs) you know, obviously there's something to convey there, but it's really just a, a thing of saying, like, you know what? You suck, but I suck too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, so it's yeah. like that that whole thing. Yeah, and I think there's there's something about ele- or uh, instrumental music that it it's because you're not constantly you're not told what the song is about through the lyrics. It kind of invites the listener to be part of the creative process because they have to assign their own meaning to it. For sure. And see, that's, I think that's one of the biggest things about being an artist, I think. Mm. You know, whether it be visual art, like a painter or a filmmaker or even, you know, in- instrumental music, whatever, mm-hmm. is having that open for interpretation. Yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's next? I mean, after the bourbon, you know. <laughs> The, you, you hear the little the, the little clink of the ice. <laughs> um, I'm working on a few collaborations with some people. I'd like to wrap those up. Uh, I've got two songs I'd like to make for the album I'm currently working on, as well as the collab that I need to finish for that. Um, um, what else is going on? I have a three-track EP with a friend that's done. We're just waiting on other artwork and different kind of non-musical aspects right. waiting on finishing for that. Um, and then I'd just like to get back out and start playing some more shows now that I'll have a lot more material. For sure. Um, so definitely having collaborations is, is always cool. And I understand like the collaboration in the aspect of like rock music and, mm-hmm. and, and pop music and stuff. Cause it's like, okay, this dude played a solo on something or this person sang, you know, it's like having Ozzy sing with like somebody else, you know, yeah. that's the, the, the collaboration. But like when you do like electronic music, how do you collaborate? It's like one of you will write like, this and they put like like layer something over it yeah sometimes and, and a big factor is whether or not you're actually in the room with with the person or if you're just collaborating online um it's a lot more fun to be in a room with someone and let them do their thing and if you hear something in your head you're like all right scoot over I'm, <laughs> all right, let, let me let me drive for a little bit and let me have just, the keyboard yeah and you just kind of trade off ideas and then it, it does also help a lot to actually just be able to see what someone else is doing because everybody's got different skill sets and different ways of different workflows and ways of doing things. Um, but if you're collaborating online, it's a lot more difficult because you don't, it's not as instantaneous. Yeah. Or, yeah. Instantaneous because you got to send it. You got to wait for them to get the time to look at it. Right. And then send it, wait for them to send it back. And, and then you make your notes and send it back and say, Hey, drop drop the the uh the bass in the mix a little bit or whatever yeah. Yeah. yeah but i think with what you just said about being in the same room is i've written in the same room with with musicians for pretty much my entire teenage life to my adult life mm-hmm. almost my entire adult life and everything but what you just said was like the equivalent of getting in a room and writing lyrics with somebody mm-hmm. and then it's like knowing you know knowing how to play into their skill set in person with each other. And that's totally rad Yeah, because I'd never would have, I never would have known that that was the same, like it, the, the equivalent just on a different, different side of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and- that's rad as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm like, Hey, I might want to collaborate with Zach. <laughs> no, I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry with fingernails. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it is cool because everyone does bring, if you're, especially if you're collaborating in a room, everyone's kind of got their skill sets. Like one person be really good at sound design. One person's really good at like writing catchy melodies and everyone just kind of gets a, assigned a job according to you know what they happen to be really good at. For sure. So in that regard, before we switch over here is whenever you go in and you start with a blank screen. And you've got whatever going on inside your head to actually, you know, that blank canvas. 
how is it for, it's like, do you start with like a beat or do you start with like, you try to map out like the melody? Yeah. It's, I usually start with, um, I start with the structure in my head. And so I place markers on the project of where, all right, this will be where the buildup is. It's where the drop is, where the reverse is. Um, and then I will spend on most projects, I'll spend like a day just finding the right sounds or making the right sounds. And so I'll just have a bunch of empty tracks with like VSTs loaded on them with the sound that I want to use. Okay. And I'll only use probably about half the ones that I, that I find or come up with. But then I, whenever it comes down to actually making this, the song, I always start with the drums and I always go by section. So I'll fill out like, this is the first drop. I'll make the drums for it, then the basses for it, and then add the melodies on top of that. And then I'll move on to, I'll work actually backwards from the first drop to like the verse or the intro or whatever you want to call it, because it's got to kind of tease the drop, right? You gotta, right. You got you to give them little hints of what's coming up. <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll start with the main part and then work my way backwards. Okay. Well, see, that's that's totally rad. That's like... I mean, I would I would assume that's how it would how you would do it, mm-hmm. but like, but when you sit there and say that you you just load up all the VSTs for like the sounds that you want to use, mm-hmm. and then from there, you know, just like arrangement and setting everything up. That's see, that's rad as shit. Yeah, a lot of I think I'm the only one I know of that does it like that. A lot of people will just start making sounds, um, but I get too bogged down in sound design aspect so i'll spend so long just trying to make a sound that's why i dedicate like a day to it right sound design and um where i just don't plan on writing anything at all um because if i try to do it at the same time i'll just spend so much time hours and hours trying to tweak this one little sound and then have really nothing to show for it right and then it takes me out of like the creative zone whereas if i if i've got all the things that i all the tracks that are on sounds that i could possibly want then i just see what works and i just go and see what works definitely and i'm sure you know spending time designing a sound or or such is even if it's for like a you know like a millisecond in the song Mm -hmm. that you know it still takes a while to do to create yeah that you know that's just like having any kind of guitar player write this like just like this one little passage it's like da 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 and it's there for a split second mm-hmm. and it might be the only time. Yeah. So yeah, dedicating the the time to to doing that and, and to keeping Yeah, I try not to half ass any of it either because there are like sometimes it's got the little da 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 sometimes that's like what ties the whole thing together. Right. You know? Exactly. Hell yeah. Some really cool things happening this coming up week. Check out Slaughter at Southgate House. It is a two-night kick-ass battle royal event with some of the most awesome fucking bands out there today. It is from Transplant Productions when Will Finer, and you're going to be getting your ass kicked that night. Actually, you're going to be getting it kicked Two nights in a row, August 5th and August 6th. We're going to have X Hoarder, Shankable Offense, Cheap Gas, Blazing Teen, Wraith, Idol Throne, Black Knife, so many fucking more. There is a meet and greet for X Hoarder Saturday, August 6th at 1.45 p.m. And then it's going to be at Jet Age Records, just up the, a couple of blocks up the street from the event. You want to be there. You know you want to fucking be there. It's at the Southgate House Revival in Newport, Kentucky. The epicenter of metal these days. Because it's right in the middle of Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio. Hell yeah. Tickets can be found on TicketWeb.com, SouthgateHouse.com, and you can also find out more information at Facebook.com slash Transplant Music Pro. Get your fucking asses out there and metal the fuck on. Stay heavy. Hey, Metalheads, it's with great pleasure I get to tell you guys about a new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Ageless Art, New Albany. 
After 20 years of owning and operating Ageless Art in Clarksville, Indiana, Phil Garrett had a vision for a new type of tattoo studio. Something that is clean and modern, sleek, refined, inviting. And he's done just that with Ageless Art in New Albany. You can find it at 2736 Charlestown Road, New Albany, Indiana, 47150. Business hours are Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays are 12 to 6. All sessions are appointment only, so give them a call and go get you some new ink. Or if it's your first time, go get your first one, baby. So let's go ahead and switch over. This is everybody's favorite aspect of the show. We're going to ask some general profile questions to you as a person. Now, these are all new questions. The cool thing about it is is none of them have been repeated yet. And Oh, boy. It's it's questions about life. Okay. It, it doesn't. It, it could be related to music. It could be related to whatever you want to relate it to. But for the most part, it's all about life. Okay. Questions. So, question number one. Because you, you've went to college a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is kind of cool. Uh, when you have to study for a test, what is a proven successful method for your studying? Really loud music that blocks everything else out. Really? Yep. That's I, I can't concentrate with, with silence. Wow. Yeah. Like you get inside your own head mm-hmm. and you just start thinking about all all the shit. I guess. Yeah. Is I think it's because I got ADHD. There's like if I try if I don't have something if I don't have like a layer of just something in the background, my mind just goes it's it's all over the place. Definitely, I could get that, and yeah, that that can be tough, especially you know that whole you know silent car drive on the way home type shit. Oh, I hate that. Ooh, yeah, yeah, got to blast, got to blast something, and you something. can't. And the bad thing is, is, you can't blast something that's too heavy or fast because then you start speeding. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, right. And, and, exactly. you, and then you get in fucking trouble. <laughs> yep. Because a cab man, a cab. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What is the one thing you wish you had the money to pay for some <laughs> something to do for you? Uh, that's the example when you pulled before the show started. It was, and I tr- and I shuffled the shit all around. Um, so what if you had the money? What would you pay some someone to do for you? Someone to do pay someone to do for me? Yeah. Um, I think I'd hire like a manager or something. Someone to just like. Do these interviews for you? <laughs> no, no, no. This is no, not this. But shit, like, like, in, like social media and oh god, reaching out yes. Because I, I, I hate doing that shit. Yeah, and, I, and you, ha- you have to. Though. Yeah, it's the necessary evil today. And I, I'm gonna say this now. Yeah, I would totally dump fucking Facebook and Instagram and yeah. and Spotify and TikTok and all that social media shit. Just to, you know, I just want to do this part of it. I want yeah. to talk to people. I don't want to have to fucking promote it. I want somebody else to promote it for yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Like a, yeah, like a... Uh, like a PR person like a or a PR manager. Or manager or social media guru. I don't know. <laughs> social Someone media to do, to do all that shit for me. Every time I hear the word guru now, I immediately think of that terrible Mike Myers movie, The Love Guru. <laughs> and, and like, that's the, that's the first thing I think of. And it's like, oh, God, yeah. please don't say guru. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't hire him. What are you superstitious about? Oh. I don't know. I don't... I don't. Anything? Fly? Fear? Um, like, a, you're superstitious if you think about the plane crashing when you fly, it's going to... Oh, I do think about that every time. I think about Thanks it when they take 11. off. Huh? I think about it when they take off, like, yeah. from the airport, and yeah. I'm driving over the interstate. I'm like superstitious that one's gonna crash into the fucking interstate when I'm driving in over it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I um, I guess I'm always like, if, if there's a train on an overpass mm-hmm. and I'm driving under, I'm like, oh fuck, it really suck if that thing just fell on me. Oh, because I, yes. I always have that thought in my that, head. Yeah, that um, that that innate fear, or rational fear, or whatever it's called. Yep. Oh yeah, I get that too. That's crazy. And especially because you know sometimes in in some places in Louisville, especially over by like U of L. Oh yeah, the fucking they're all over the place. The, well, like the 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 viaduct is so low mm-hmm. that the semis completely get fucking trashed and stuck under it. So yeah, yep. you would totally think that a fucking train would fall through it. Yep, because it's been hit so many fucking times. <laughs> right, exactly. What activities make you lose track of time? Definitely working on music. Um, 
being on social media. <laughs> right. <laughs> Another reason that I don't want to do any of that shit. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, oh, yeah. Like the whole, you know, the TikTok thing hmm. is totally a time suck. Yeah. Like you'll sit there you, and you'll, there are minute to three minute videos, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I totally get that. It's like you, you watch a video for a minute. Then you swipe to to the next one, or it's like, oh, that one sucks. Swipe, swipe, swipe. But then swipe. you watch ten of them, and it's like half, you wasted half an hour. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's totally like mindless zombie shit. Yeah, <laughs> like did I need? Am I enriched by having watched that? No, not at all. No, it made me giggle. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, or, the, or you when you watch the thirst traps or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like ten minutes from now, I'm not going to remember that video. Oh hell no. <laughs> That's why there was the save feature. <laughs> yeah, it's true. True. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, writing music yeah. and social media, anything else that you do that makes you lose track of time? No, I generally try to stay pretty aware of what time it is because I try to try to keep myself busy. Right. Um, because again, the silent car thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't handle inactivity very well. I, I get that. I get that. What do you think one of the biggest cons of being famous would be? The assumption that just because you're famous, everyone likes you, I think would be a big... Big misconception. Big, yep. Yeah. For sure. That I could see that. Yeah. That's pretty Even fucking you just huge. turn into an asshole. Yeah, I mean, you'd turn into Axel Rowe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got, gotta give Axel some shit because he's from Indiana. Is so, he? Yeah. You didn't know that? I did not. Yeah, he's from Lafayette. Really? Yeah. Huh. But no, I, I think that's a big, I think that's a big deal too, you know, that, you know, just because you're famous doesn't mean that everyone likes you. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, you know, I mean, but is that famous or infamous? I, I don't see a distinction really. Okay. Um, because, you know, what, I mean, I don't want to say Hitler's famous. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. famous means, like, you know, Freddie Mercury was famous. Mm. You know, Metallica are famous. But, but like, I would say that, you know, Dave is infamous because not a lot of people like Dave Mustaine. Yeah. I'd say <laughs> Lars is infamous. Yes, <laughs> Lars is, is definitely infamous. I mean, for sure, because of certain things that he's done in his career. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably going to fucking get an email back on this. So. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but for sure, you know, just because you're out in the media and out in the spotlight, yeah, you, you can be a shit person. You. And just because you get free shit all the time doesn't really mean that people actually like you for sure do you have an area of your life that you are never satisfied with probably something music musically related because i just i never feel like i've gotten to where i want to be okay um but then again if i did reach the point where i thought i had maxed out my potential or whatever there wouldn't really be much incentive to keep doing it for sure so that's interesting that brings up you know that when is a song done for you? That's a tough one. Yeah, it is. It's because tough. you have the ability. Well, I mean, all of us, even with like me being in a band, an actual band, you know, have the ability to do remixes and remasters. Mm-hmm. But in electronic music, it is far more acceptable to do remixes of songs like where you use like the same drum beat mm-hmm. and the same quote verse riff yeah and and you just rearrange it or but so so like seriously the when when do you consider a song being finished i whenever i'm just happy with how it sounds because i don't think it'll i'll ever get a get like a perfect mix um or a perfect flow from start to finish but whenever I'm, i reach a point where i'm like okay i could play this I could play this from start to finish in front of a crowd and be proud of it and be satisfied with it. Okay. I'd say that's probably as close. That's when I would say consider something done. Nice. Because that's always been a thing for me. Like, yeah. when do I consider a song finished? And for me, it's like this. This is when I consider it finished. It's like, And, okay, and I'm holding up... Physical media. Phys- well, that it's it's written... 
to what I wanted it to what I want it to be. Mm-hmm. I don't have to bicker about a part in a song saying like I really wish that pre chorus wasn't there mm-hmm. because I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna record it that way, right? But once it is released upon the world, I feel like it is a finished thing. Yeah. And I once it's out there, you can't change it unless you want to like do a remaster. Right. Something. And I know people who have done that mm-hmm. for years who have written the same song for the last 20 years and rewrote it and re-recorded it. And, and it's like, I don't get that. It's like, dude, Let's hey, see. hey, it sucked 20 years ago. <laughs> it's not getting any better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, yeah. and I hate to be that guy, but like, I don't ever see a, a point to, it'd be like Metallica re, re-recording like Creeping Death. Mm-hmm. It's like, you can't get any better than what it is. Oh no, Creeping Death is perfect. Right. It's perfect. You know, is. and that's like Kiss. Mm-hmm. Kiss fucking re-record all their songs on every Greatest Hits album. Yeah. Like they are like totally re-recorded and like they're down they're they're down in pitch now and they're you know it's like fucking stop <laughs> yeah i want 1976 i think yeah i think that would just get obnoxious i would get so angry at my songs just if i would you, get sick of them if you just re-recorded it yeah. for, or re remixed and remastered it the yeah. whole fucking time yeah and yeah. then there's like what and then you have like 10 different versions of them out there right like which one which one do you really want to hear i don't know i feel like the original's probably always Here's something interesting, too. When you go out to write, and I know that I, this is probably something that should have been asked earlier, but I'm going to ask it now. Uh, when you go and write and record, and record for the menial sense of uh, not like how we're recording this show, yeah. it's it's obviously building it. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. So, do you cut your songs down do you like do you go in you arrange like 12 minutes and then you cut it down to like six or or whatever do you just let it go never i i have made a song that long in a long time but um sometimes i'll be like uh, i'll be like okay well this like i'll have one verse that stirs as the main intro and then the second verse which kind of is a bridge between the first and second drop and sometimes it's like well the second verse is too similar to the first one, and it doesn't really bring anything new, and I can't think of anything new to put in it to make it different enough, so I'll just get rid of the whole damn thing. Um, okay. So sometimes I'll do something like that. It only shortens it by, like, maybe 30 seconds or so. But but nothing like... It's not like you're losing whole scenes. No. Like, you know, like the whole scene of Luke in the fucking Tashi station. You're not losing that whole <laughs> thing there. Yeah. That whole, like... Like six minute scene. Okay. Yeah, never, never anything that drastic. Um, okay. Or if if I do, I will take um, elements that I like the most from that cut scene, and then start a new project with those, and then use that as the basis for a complete other song. Okay. Which ties into somewhat of the concept idea, mm-hmm. because yeah. th- they were previously one thing. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah, and that way you could connect two songs that weren't previously connected. Yeah. That, see, that's fucking rad as shit. Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground, from the graves of all those unholy, and they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine, an independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats, they're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. 
Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. Hey guys, Wrestling Steve of the Wrestling Steve Show here. Uh, so if you're currently listening to the Metal Forge with Mark Jackson, then you understand that Mark Jackson has a pretty discerning taste when it comes to music as a whole. You also understand that he has a discerning taste for professional wrestling, just like me. The, my show is called The Wrestling Steve Show. Uh, I talk about modern and classic pro wrestling in a completely unbiased, unfiltered way. Be sure to check me out on all available podcasting platforms. That is The Wrestling Steve Show. And I am the host, Wrestling Steve. Just remember, uh, like like Confucius said, uh, man who goes through turnstile in Thailand uh, is going to Bangkok. Pro wrestling. Dude, before we finish, as always, links are listed below. So please give a like, a share, and a follow. Hit him up on social media because he loves that shit. <laughs> He's on it every day. Uh, unfortunately, I am. <laughs> No, but seriously, click the like button, give them a share, give them a follow. Do you have anybody you want to say any shout outs to? Um you? No, fuck that. <laughs> Stop it. Um I mean, fuck, dude. You came out to see us in fucking in Hollywood when we played there. So yeah, that was a that was a fun time. That was. Meeting Jeff Hanneman at the at the Rainbow before he had passed away and See, I don't remember that at all. You keep telling me about yeah, that. I must I mean, have been, you, you I must all, have been pretty hammered at that you point. All, I, I, I think know. I was the only sober one there. I think I had like one beer. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fucking in Hollywood with one beer. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? But I had to, I had to like, you know, make sure everybody got where they needed to be. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, shout outs to um, Midwest Massive. They really, they, they are a group that's putting on a bunch of, uh, they do monthly EDM shows. Okay. And uh, they put, they got me back on the stage um so they've been really cool um girlfriend noki has been awesome super supportive of everything super awesome yep um and just anyone that like likes and shares or takes time to check out what i'm doing or appreciates it big thank you definitely hell yeah man awesome awesome stuff so final question of the day is what famous person's memoir would you like to read? Oh, um, there's a lot of good ones out there. There are. Shit. Um, now that I've asked, you've all went blank. Yeah, I totally <laughs> have. Um, a lot of dead air. Uh, I don't know. Um, we'll start out with stuff that you have read that you enjoyed. I've read. I liked the Rob Halford. Memoir. Oh fuck yes, really and good. he's about to come out with another one. Oh well, there you go. That's the one I would like to read. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called Biblical. Okay. Something like that. Interesting. I didn't know he was going to follow up with another one. Yeah. And, like, Confess is a great, great autobiography. Yeah. Like, and the audiobook is even better mm -hmm. because it's him. Oh, he narrates it. He narrates That's his cool. own audiobook, which is totally cool, you know. Um, and I don't know if you do the audiobook thing or not, but, like, seriously, that would be one to, to listen. Get, I haven't. This but. is audible. <laughs> um. I like the one of Randy Blythe from Lamb of God. Okay. I know you're not a fan. Yeah, I, I'm definitely not a fan, but <laughs> um, well, for I sure. thought that was very good. I don't know. It's far, my, of course, my mind is obviously going towards music and metal. I think I would like to read a memoir by someone in like the early 90s black metal scene in Norway, like with all the church burnings. Interesting. Shit. Like a like Burzum. Fenris or, yeah, or, or Varg, even though he's kind of major asshole yeah um that's general asshole to you <laughs> <laughs> um I th but i think that one of those would be really interesting there's a page on facebook that has fenris in it and he's it's like and it's the same uh and they share the same picture every friday mm -hmm. and it's him like where he's in like the the documentary or whatever and he's just like are you having a good Friday? You know, it's just like <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. And they, and uh, one person I know is like, he shares it every single Friday. That's and hilarious. I, and I laugh my ass off every time. Cause he's on the phone with somebody Yeah. yeah. and he's just like, 
hey, it's Finriz. Are you having a good Friday? <laughs> That's totally good yeah. shit. To- I, totally awesome. Have you seen the uh, political campaign poster that he that he put out? No. He ran for some like I don't know some political position in Norway. This is forever ago, obviously, but um, he, he didn't really even want it. <laughs> Or think that he would get elected. Then his 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 campaign poster was him with his cat and it said, "Please don't vote for me." And he probably got it. Yeah, he did. Oh my god! <laughs> See, you know what? I'm gonna say this: if you ever in your life do anything to be a smartass as a joke, it's probably gonna fucking happen. Yeah, dude. Thank you for coming on to the Metal Forge this week, Thanks dude. For fingernails. Me. Thank you for coming on to the Metal Forge <laughs> this week. Uh, I appreciate everything that you've done. I love hanging out with you because it's it, it, it's an awesome fucking time. It's like there's always laughs. There's always bourbon or yep. tequila on the rocks. There's always very spirited discussions of metal. Yeah, and yep. like you see what they just did. What? Yeah, <laughs> the yep. shit like that. It's yep. like, well, I don't know if I would do that. <laughs> Uh, it's always a good time. It's always good laughs and everything. And I'm glad you're out actually making new music and playing shows. Yeah. Because I think I've tried to always be that kind of a driving force for you to be like, hey, fucking just go out and do it. Fucking, yeah. It well, feels good to be out there. Yeah, just- it does. And if you're in the Louisville area in the future, stop into one of the Metal Forge Live showcases at Magbar or wherever they may be in the future. You might end up seeing uh, Fingernails Live there, too. You might. That'd be Hope- awesome. That would be awesome. But, you know, especially between, like, teardowns and setups and shit like that. That yeah. would be totally cool to keep something going on. Yeah. I, That's not a jukebox. Yeah, exactly. I And I thought about that, some of the metal shows that, that I've been to. Like, they'll play just, like, hip-hop and stuff. Yeah. Stuff that's... I mean, it, it's hip hop. It, it keeps the energy going, but I can I can curate much better towards this metal crowd than for sure than whatever. I don't I don't even know who the rappers are today. Right? And <laughs> but, does anybody? Yeah, that's the thing. They're all. It's all a a big like hidden thing. I think at this point. Yeah. So, on the way out today, this is from Fingernails. This is Devourer of Worlds.
Hey, thank you all for tuning into this week's episode of the Metal Forge. I want to take a minute to remind you guys about the Patreon page. Over on the Patreon page, we have the tiers set up to support the production of the show. We feature the Down and Dirty, which is just a buck. There's nothing special for that one. It just sends me a thank you because every dollar helps. Then there's the Double Down and Dirty. Much akin to the Down and Dirty tier, everything helps produce the show in the end. You make your presence known, and I appreciate that more than you realize. Thank you for being a dedicated friend and supporter to the Metal Forge. By selecting that tier, you will receive some cool Metal Forge stickers in your mailbox. Now, we're really going to start pounding the Metal Madness with the Apprentice Metalhead for just $5 a month. By becoming an Apprentice Metalhead, you'll be given early access to the shows, published 24 hours before everyone else gets it. You're also going to receive three entries in any contest that we do here at the Metal Forge. You're also going to receive a 10% discount on all Metal Forge merch, and you're going to receive a sweet Metal Forge patch for your battle jacket or backpack. And now, here is the big one. This is the Master Metalhead for just $10 a month. By becoming a Master Metalhead, you will receive a hand-numbered Metal Forge Master Metalhead membership card. You're going to be given early access to the shows as well, with 36 hours before everyone else. You're going to receive five entries in any contest that we do here at the Metal Forge. You'll be able to submit audio questions that I will use on the show of you asking questions to the upcoming guests. Remember, timing is everything, and you will need to keep up with the upcoming guest list on the website. You're also going to receive advanced knowledge of any new merch coming out and be given a 25% discount on all Metal Forge merch. And you're also going to get all of the other rewards from the other tiers. So visit patreon.com slash Metal Forge Radio today and help support the Metal Forge. Rock on.